am seeing the things bounce. Oh, jeez. I guess I hit record. So now we're starting. Hey, little sister, what's the worst show ever? That gets my goat. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of That Gets My Goat. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rich Outfield. This is going to be a happy episode, because today we went and saw Logan. We did. Or as I like to call it, X-Men Origins Wolverine 3, <laughs> colon Logan. Yeah, that is a much better title, I think. <laughs> okay, this won't really be a happy episode because we saw Logan. <laughs> it was an interesting show. I, or Should we jump right into it or do we have any business beforehand? Uh, subscribe to Rish's Patreon and donate to the show on PayPal and... Buy Rish's stuff on Amazon or Audible. Yeah, all of those things. That sounds good. That's the opening business. Now, on to the show. <laughs> the, Logan, wow. The theater that we saw it at, and you had been there before. <laughs> One time. But I could not believe it when we walked in, because we, we always try and sit in the very center row, uh, you know, center of of the row, and all these people had their feet up. And I just assumed they had them up on like the bars, like you know, you and I enjoyed. <laughs> That's what we always there. we always sit there because the bar is in front of us, and you could so we could put our feet up there. But what it was was there all these reclining seats, and they're they're not even like lazy boys. They're like electronic, and they expand, and 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 the back goes down, and and you can just it's like a dentist chair, and there's two hundred of like them. It's like a in dentist there. chair, but comfortable. <laughs> Oh my god, you sat at it and you're like, whoa, I'm sitting in a cloud. Um, I, dude, I would never say something like that. <laughs> Holy smoke, dude. Uh, I believe that's a direct quote. Uh, I remember the first time I came in and sat in one of those. See, they've been messing with this theater that we go to all the time. And, and uh, there's been few showings of a lot of films that we wanted to see and... We've had to go to the other theater down the street because, you know, there was, you know, they had Star Wars and it's like, no, there's just, just one showing. And uh, people really aren't into those shows, so <laughs> we only put it in one theater. And I couldn't figure out what the heck was going on, why it was doing that. Um, and recently we came and saw something and just, they just had the whole one side of the theater was just blocked off. And uh, then I came here on my daughter's birthday. She wanted to watch Moana. And uh, we came here and we went. Now the other side of the theater was blocked off. And we went into our... Th yeah, the recliners were there. And I was like, oh my gosh. And it took me a while to even figure out how to do it. Because there's like a button. They're electronic. So you just push the button. And it's like... Zzzz. 080T slowly uh, lifts your feet up for you and leans you back it's it's pretty impressive they were very soft i'm sure five years from now all of those cleaners will smell like butt <laughs> and they'll you know all the padding on them will be so crushed from all the obese people like me that come to see movies and yeah it'll just be awful but uh, for now and they'll be stuck permanently in the recline position <laughs> right yeah none of them will work They'll be like broken so that they're actually leaned forward, so your so your face is basically on your knees. Just like oh, assigned seating. Sorry, sir, that's where you've got to be. But yeah, somehow Rish hadn't seen any of the trailers that they showed us, which I was surprised at because I've seen pretty much all of them. And then the, the show started. I don't know. Johnny Cash did make an appearance, but it wasn't until later on. That was, I, I think that was what you said was the best part of the trailer, was the Johnny Cash uh, Nine Inch Nails cover. Well, absolutely. I mean, it's still the best song of the 21st century. And yeah, it didn't matter what images you were seeing. <laughs> Hearing that song made you like, oh, wow, this is a powerful movie. Oh, my gosh. And yeah, I actually... <laughs> they used it for the Trolls movie, and you're like, oh, man, this is going to be... Oh, wow. I love that one shaking its butt. Oh, I'm so moved. I hurt myself today. I, I Yeah, I missed that not being in the movie. I, I, they could have used it if they wanted to. But. Yeah. But, oh well. Yeah, it started out with 
And, and yeah, that was bizarre. They started out with a, de- a Deadpool trailer that used the John Williams Superman music in it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. That was the one trailer that I hadn't seen before. I think that was specifically for this movie because it had curse words. I didn't realize until later that, yeah, he'd started straight off with an F word. And we got to see Ryan Reynolds' ass yes. pressed up against the glass. You can't do much better than that, folks. Sorry. Yeah, we could have just walked out at that moment and <laughs> really been edified and and gotten all we needed. But yeah, this movie, I think right after Deadpool was released and made a shitload, all of a sudden they made an announcement. Oh, you guys will pay for a hardcore superhero movie? Well, in that case, the next Wolverine is going to be hardcore. Yeah, immediately. Now, they didn't go the Deadpool route, because <laughs> unlike Deadpool, Wolverine was not funny. Logan was not a uh, humorous picture. Was there any jokes in there? There had to be like one or two. There was the chick that flashed her boobies at... Uh, <laughs> she said, hey, limo Logan. driver. Yeah. I thought that was kind of nice, actually. But yeah, there, oh, there was a there a, a shortage of hot chicks in this movie. Usually, you know, there's some kind of eye candy, some kind of love interest for Logan. Nope, we're going to skip that altogether today, folks. I expected at least, you know, there to be like some evil hot scientist or something like that. Like in the last Wolverine movie, I think there was like a hot Nazi scientist or some shite like that. No, not, they, they didn't even go that far. They were all the cast of uh, Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. <laughs> they were all interchangeable and, yeah, all dudes. It was all the people who didn't manage to get uh, any of Schwarzenegger's roles through the 80s. Every one of them was a commando reject. <laughs> yeah, and they didn't do the mutual colors of Benetton for the bad guys at all. It's like all white, grisly bad guys. Yeah, yeah. But no, yeah, no, no jokes. It was very somber. I, no, what's the next step on the ladder from somber? Dour. dour. It was a pretty dour movie, and right off the bat, you get look. We're just like Deadpool because he wakes up in his limo, opens the door, and gets shot. Then gets up and starts stabbing and cutting things off. And when he put his claws. Oh, this was actually a little later when he put his claws through somebody's, like, just right, like, through their skull. As though their skull was made of butter. (laughs) Just chunk, okay, popping a balloon here. Yeah, immediately you're like, okay, yeah, they are going the Deadpool route. This is going to be gory. And when it comes down to it, I can't complain. You know, I talked about it, I swear, did did I say this on a show? Or was I just talking to you about it? But you've got the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, for example, who are characters who are, A, they're ninjas. They may be turtles, and they may be teenagers, and they may be mutants, and that's all aside. They are ninjas. They use cutting weapons to do their thing. Cutting or breaking weapons. Yes. Cutting or, okay, yeah, there is the one guy who has the, well, two, I guess. One has a staff, and and one has a... uh, the nunchucks. And so, yeah, in those cases, you're breaking bones. You should be breaking heads. Raphael has the size. Donatello. Oh, damn, Donatello's the staff. What's... Leonardo? Le- thank you. Leonardo has two swords. Okay? I've never seen him cut a single person with them. Because these are children's characters, and so they're not really ninjas. They're just Teenage Mutant Turtles. And they only use their swords or nunchucks as, uh, I guess, spectacle. They swing them around, and then when somebody comes, they kick them. And for the most part, that's kind of what Wolverines had to be in all of these X-Men movies. We've seen them take it to a person or two in bloodless ways so that they can get a PG-13 as opposed to an R. But somebody who has three cut-through-steel knives coming out of each of his hands, there's got to be some blood in his movies. And for the first time, 
we actually got to see what Wolverine should really be like. No, not that I am all for gory, nasty, dour movies. But, yeah, man, I think it's the way Wolverine needs to be. Anything else is kind of dishonest. You know, it shouldn't be that way in Moana. Or even the Ninja Turtles, truthfully. But uh, Wolverine, yeah, it pretty much needs to be that way. As harsh as it, as it was, I think it was the right way to go. And it was nice to see them. You know, how many movies? You said there was nine? I think this is the tenth. So this is the tenth. I mean, we could count them if you want. X-Men but... X. Oh. I mean, it was, yeah, tons of violence. I mean, like, farther than we've ever seen anything go. It was like RoboCop level violence in this movie but there was only one moment where i went ah and it was when <laughs> and he stabbed the wolverine clone through the armpit oh. for some reason i was just like ah and i don't know why it was like getting stabbed through the eye or the stomach yeah, or the or leg or through the... the jaw and all the way up through the skull and stuff none like of that. that bothered me that was all cool but to see somebody get stabbed through the armpit i was just like ow kind of thing and yeah you had to go to the bathroom in the middle of the movie and you missed the part where uh x23 where laura had the blades coming out of her feet and she was flipping around and sticking her feet into people's heads and stomachs and backs and all that and I, it was delightful man <laughs> it was so much i mean it was just fun for the whole family i i felt joy for the first time in a long time seeing time that since hit girl went crazy on people i asses. did okay i yeah i didn't love lara as much as i loved hit girl but yes the, the, there was a similar sensibility of seeing you know the brutality of this child kind of thing but yeah i don't think she used the darn foot uh, blades for the whole rest of the movie she used them a tiny bit because yeah i i missed it stupidly i thought this would be a good idea uh, we went to Wendy's before going to the movie, and when I refilled my drink, I thought, oh, I'll, I'll just smuggle this in, because if I leave it out in the car, it'll probably be flat by the time I come back out. So I stuffed it in my coat, <laughs> which is really dangerous to have a full soda just sitting in your coat in a big pocket there, but it worked out. I didn't manage to drench myself, but then, yeah, I had to pee so bad, and it was only like a half hour into the movie, and I was like, Holy crap, I'm going to die. And it was painful. It was painful doing the button that lowered my seat <laughs> and changed the position of my body was painful. That's how badly I had to pee. Oh, my gosh. Uh, folks, remember how he said at the very beginning that you could help the show by donating or by, by apparently sending me money? If you want to help big bladder transplant that's what i think we need we just like somebody like pack it in styrofoam or something and just mail it to the show <laughs> i just need a, one of them uh a baggie that i can attach to my belt and a catheter so it just automatically goes and i don't have to go anywhere to let it let it loose oh but yeah so th th this is spoilers the last hugh jackman wolverine movie is it, now this is my question, is it the last of the, because, you know, we had Days of Future Past already. Yeah. And what I gathered from that movie was that that was the last of the original cast, I guess we'll call them, X-Men movies. And we were going to move on with first class guys and no more of the previous bunch you know, it was like kind of like their last hurrah. Sure, that's, yeah, it ends and, with you getting to see even characters who are dead come back. and Yeah, and then uh, there's this one. That's the one thing about all these X-Men movies. This is X-Men 10. Does is, is that count Deadpool too? I think so, yeah. Okay, so the X-Men 10 here. The one thing about all these X-Men movies is they don't seem to give a shit about continuity mm -hmm. from one movie to the next. They just use what they need and... Discard the rest. And say F you to whatever happened before. We'll go with this bit, because this was cool, but we're just going to forget this bit. And so you have characters appearing all over the place. You know, you have one happening in the 60s. She was a young woman in the 60s. But also an even younger woman in Wolverine Origins. I don't know. You just have all sorts of crazy crap going on. So I don't know what 
the continuity is that we're in with this one. I'm assuming it's not Days of Future Past happened and everything's better continuity. It's Days of Future Past didn't happen, but a lot of the other stuff did. They did mention the Statue of Liberty, which was movie one. I, I assume this is the end of... What was the third one called? Uh, not United. The Last Stand. The Last Stand. Okay, after The Last Stand. And they had invented their mutant cure. Because we had the guy who basically, I think, cured the world of mutants, I guess, by putting out like the cure in bottled water and stuff like that. Sneakily cured the world of mutants. Is what I gathered is what happened. Because there was no mutants left. And it wasn't because of Scarlet Witch. It took place in 2029. So it's possible that Days of Future Past ends with them changing the timeline so that, like, the Sentinels didn't ever happen and, you know, all that stuff. But this is 13, 14 years after that. And, yeah, the world has gone to hell again. Yeah, I saw that there's, there were these trucks that drove themselves and they passed a billboard that said four more years and it was President Pence. So, you know, it's just where that, that was... President Pence in 2029? That was a joke, kids. I, I did the math before I told the joke. It, it could still happen. Could. So I feel like it probably followed up Days of Future Past, you know, if, if the world went to hell after that happy ending. Still went to hell again? The X-Men, um, the X-Men just disappeared? Well, okay, that's the thing. They never explained what happened exactly. But Xavier lost his mind and killed all the X-Men, right? You got that, right? Was it something like that? Is that what happened? He did say he, he had, remembered what happened. He had an attack a year ago, and it killed all the X-Men, except for Logan, who was either not there or survived because of his abilities. And yeah. that sucks, man. That poor guy, dude. Yeah, um, that was, I think, one of my favorite parts about the movie, was just taking somebody like Xavier... Xavier, is it, do you have to say Xavier or can you just say Xavier? I always said Xavier as a kid until they started making movies where it was Xavier. And I was like, okay, all right. Okay. Xavier, yeah, he's now like... He's 90. Yeah, he's like a time bomb, basically, you know. He's really old and you never think about that kind of thing. What would happen, you know, many years down the road once these people can't control themselves anymore? And yeah, they're caring for him in this dump <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. And they've got him inside this little water tower that is tipped over to try and protect him. I guess that's their uh, Cerebro that they've put him in. <laughs> and they have to keep him drugged so that he doesn't destroy anything else. But while they ke when they keep him drugged, he's sort of crazy. Yeah, he and he doesn't really know what's going on in the world. Um, Patrick Stewart was just great as, as a very almost pathetic, I hate to use that word, but just, you know, at the very end of his life where there's no more dignity, you know, and, uh, a broken man, uh, but he still was trying with Logan, trying to get him on that path. At that one point he says to Logan, I think he says you're a big disappointment or I'm very disappointed in you. What was it he said? Something like that, yeah. I think you're, you're a big disappointment. And <laughs> it sucks to hear that because, I mean, Xavier is the closest thing that Logan has to a father. And they really played up that whole Xavier is Logan's father and Logan is the father of Lara. And, you know, it's a generational thing kind of and. I don't know. I, I, that was some good stuff there with, with Xavier. I mean, you don't want to see somebody who's a hero like that go out that way. Uh, it's better than what Michael Bay did to Optimus Prime. But still, you know, it's just that there's that moment when he says, I had the best night, a sleep of my life or something like that. And, and of course, he's saying it to the thing that's not really Wolverine. But... Uh, we hear it. We know that, you know, his last night was really, really good. But uh, it was his last chapter. And, and up until they killed Logan at the end of the movie, I thought, well, you know, he's he's going to ride off into the sunset having made a difference. And, and now he has a reason to live, a reason not to use that adamantium bullet because he's got this kid. 
and yet even when he died and he was buried, <laughs> you said, oh, shoot, now he's going to have to dig himself through yeah. all those rocks. They put uh, all these rocks on top of his grave. And I thought, I mean, they could have at least left it just earth so that when he has to dig himself out, which he'll do once he finishes healing... Now he's got to push the rocks off, too. Oh, man. But, um, yeah, I don't think they're going to do that. I think they wanted to start over. Now, I've heard this. Because of the success of Deadpool, another lesson that they may have taken from that movie is it's okay to do things like they are in the comic books. They've spent ten movies, or nine, I guess, since we can't count Deadpool as one of them, trying to be different than the comic books. They put... L Logan has been Logan the whole time. He's never been Wolverine. He's never once worn his yellow outfit. None of them have. I mean, they haven't... The closest they came to it was when they all kind of wore matching black freaking leather outfits that had, like, maybe an X across their chest or something. I think there was the one time when uh, Beast was in it where they were wearing the X-Men jackets that they wore in... Who, whose run was it? Do you know the what I'm Joss about? Whedon, John Cassidy thing? Or what? No, I don't think it was. I think it was the earlier... Oh, uh, the guy that you liked, the Frank Quitely stuff? Right, who the, was the... the Morrison, Grant Morrison. Okay, the, yeah, the Grant Morrison run, I think, is when they wore those leather jackets. Because I think the, he tried to do the same thing, where make them all, yeah, we're going to make them wear leather and be cool and be like normal people and not wear crazy costumes. Yeah, they've always gone the Grant Morrison route in these uh, movies. And so it'll be cool. And that's one of the, I've talked to this friend of mine at work asking, will there ever be... A Wolverine wearing a Wolverine costume in a movie. And, you know, my guess is I'll probably never live to see that. But maybe, uh, maybe that's basically what we're launching here. Logan died at the end of this movie. Huge, huge Ackman will never bring his Ackman onto the screen as Wolverine again. But... Maybe we'll see now a Wolverine, you know, wearing the yellow costume. Can you imagine being the guy who's got to be Wolverine after Hugh Jackman has done it for ten... Well, not ten movies. How many movies has he been in? If you count Deadpool, ten movies. He, he was, was even in that awful one, the, the Apocalypse. He was? He had the big helmet on. He was Weapon X. Oh, yeah, that's right. I was thinking that there had to be at least one of those... First class ones he wasn't in, but he was. Um. Well, you said, how would you like to be that guy? Uh, the thing is, George Lazenby is that guy. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Garfield was that guy. Who uh, the, but very the few people guy. like you know George Lazenby. No, I'm name. just saying, once you've had the definitive James Bond, people have to follow that. And we've had five or six of them since then, and nobody cares. You know, somebody's going to follow up Daniel Craig and it's going to be awkward for one movie and then we'll get another James Bond. And we're on our third Spider-Man and one day we're going to see a new Iron Man. He's the only holdout, I think, that right now is irreplaceable. But who cares? Five years from now, we're going to have an Iron Man movie without Robert Downey Jr. And the world's not going to end. No, but um, I'm just saying, how would you like to be that guy? He's done it in ten movies and he was damn good. And yeah, trying to is like what? What are you gonna do to put your spin on it? What are you, you gonna wear the do costume. to? Yeah, maybe that's it. You wear the costume, and everybody's like, "Oh wow, he wore the original costume from the first appearance at Hulk with the with the oh, that's the an awful cheesy costume. whiskers." Why did they do that? Ugh. Anyway, <laughs> but the, the, somebody needs to do it. It just it, it, Deadpool. Yeah, it didn't. The lesson that everybody took was that oh, R rated works. But no, the, the 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 lesson they should have taken is: Did you see that guy's costume? Now pick up a comic book. It's the same. I think that is one of the lessons that they learned. Is what I'm saying. I I, I read a article online where they talked about that they're basically they learned that lesson from it, and they want to now that they've done this Logan movie and Huge Ackman is gone, they will be able to um, now relaunch. In a more comic book esque universe, a la Deadpool, they'll give everybody white eyes when they're wearing masks and shit like that. Yeah, see, that's something even Batman 
never dared pull off. And it just looks excellent on Deadpool. It just... Uh, Deadpool looks so great. And here's the thing. You don't want to cover up Robert Downey Jr.'s pretty face. You don't want to cover up Hugh Jackman's handsome face. Ryan Reynolds is a friggin' great looking dude. And you cover they up his face because that's what his deal victim. is. Well, yeah, they turned him into a burn so victim and maybe that so it doesn't anymore. it doesn't hurt so much, maybe. I don't know. But it's just like look, that's what the character is, and he seems to get it. He has no hubris of, you know, look at me. It's just like, oh geez, the face that parted a thousand legs. You're not gonna cover this up. And yeah, it's like the from the very first Tobey Maguire Spider Man movie. They could not keep the damn mask on. Yeah. It's just like, okay, yeah, that's the whole thing about Spider-Man is he doesn't take the mask off because when he does, people that he cares about get hurt or killed. <laughs> people and see so, his face and know who he is. That's why he has the mask on in the first place. And so, but any opportunity to take the fudging thing off, and, you know, same thing with uh, with Iron Man, even more so with Iron Man because it protects him from like bullets and shrapnel and, and all that stuff but it's like no let's pop this visor up all the time like it's those trick sunglasses they had in the 1980s <laughs> um, gotta pop the visor up because what well, he can't see otherwise right <laughs> I mean he needs that out of his face I guess uh, just what I'm saying is that uh, you know that's just part of who Wolverine mm -hmm. is is that he wears the costume. The same thing, you know, that Joss Whedon said is like, yes, we're superheroes. We wear uniforms. We need to just get past the fear of that, the shame of the source material that has been floating around since 2000. And yeah, if they're going to reboot, <clears throat> then just forget about that. Forget about that man who said that it would be funny if we made fun of spandex. It Do you just... think the shame comes from the fact that the last big superhero movie before X-Men was Batman and Robin? And they're like, oh yeah, we just gonna, we're gonna have to go get away from that like quite a ways, because we really poisoned the well with that movie. Gonna have to go dig a new well. <laughs> See, if you're young, <clears throat> a why are you listening to us? But <laughs> two, that if you're young, you probably have no idea how damaging Batman and Robin was. And yeah, the Kevin Smith tells this story of uh, that. He got Ben Affleck interested in comic books and he bought him like the Dark Knight Returns and all that stuff. And, and Affleck was like, oh, dude, I'm going to play Batman someday. Oh, this is going to be so great. And he's like, yeah, you can do it. Oh, it's like we'll do it together kind of thing. I'm working on Superman right now. But yeah, oh, Batman is going to be great. And, that, and then Batman and Robin comes out and it just stinks up the whole comic book playing field you know it's just like oh geez someone shat in the pool everybody out that's right and We're so i have to bleach this thing <laughs> five times and then let it sit for a week <laughs> before anybody can go swimming and again that's essentially what happened anyway kevin gets a call from affleck at home and he says dude fox has offered me daredevil matt murdoch is daredevil what do you think what, what should i do and kevin <laughs> said ben they are never going to make another Batman movie. This is the closest you'll ever have to fulfilling your dream. I'd do Daredevil if I were you. And anyway, he tells that story. And then, you know, meanwhile, cut to today. And there's been, what, five Batman movies since then. Yeah. And um, he is now Batman. And yes. And he's now Batman. I, I guess that's the punchline to that story. But he's trying to live down Daredevil. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, it's 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 been a long road and a, a, a rocky road to get us where we are. Um, right before we started recording, we were talking about the Scarlet Witch and her costume in the comic books, and I said to you, I was just like, well, what what would it look like if they actually tried to replicate the Scarlet Witch costume with Elizabeth Olsen? I was like, would that look just ridiculous, or would that be really really great? And uh, we'll just leave leave it to your imaginations, folks, to decide what the correct response to that question was. But it's like even Marvel Studios, whose bread and butter, whose multi-billion dollar assets are based on comic books. It's not just like Warner Brothers that owns a comic book company or whatever. Marvel Studios is Marvel Comics, you know, and even they are ashamed of the source material. And so... The fact that Deadpool tried so hard to just make a comic book come to life and uh, it it worked so well 
is a, you know, it's, it's maybe a harbinger of cool things to come. We'll see. I, the The rumor is that the next X-Men movie is still a sequel to X-Men Apocalypse and that it's going to be called X-Men Supernova and it takes them into the 90s. Oh, gosh. Can you? Oh, I can't wait to go the 90s. That bygone era that we all look upon with such nostalgia. And they're going to try and do the Dark Phoenix thing oh, again. Is that what it's going to be and again? Anyway, Simon Kinberg was one of the producers of this movie we just saw. And he's working on a New Mutants movie where James McAvoy will play younger Xavier collecting and training like, you know, a, a, a new team of of kids and all that stuff. And, I, and if they did the New Mutants movie right, I think I would be all over that. But there's no way in hell I'm going to go see X-Men Supernova. You know, fool me once kind of thing. But then maybe I hated X-Men Apocalypse way more than anybody else hated X-Men Apocalypse. It did not fare very well. Doesn't have high ratings. Most people didn't like it. Yeah, I they, can see them making a sequel because, you know, it's it's Apocalypse's movie three oh, in okay. this series. And sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. There's good Bond movies. There's bad Bond movies. But you don't just be like, nah, we're done with Bond movies because one of them was crappy. That's true. You make another Bond movie. So you go to the next decade and you make another... Uh, X-Men movie. Well, but the reason I said I'm not going to go to that is because there was all this talk when Deadpool was this giant hit that they were going to just restart. Uh You know, toss away all the singer continuity and say the next X-Men movie is going to be the first X-Men movie. And so anything that has come before... We're, we're not going to Don't they toss away the singer continuity with each movie as they make a new one? <laughs> well, you know, I guess they don't toss away all of it. They always keep a little bit here and there. <laughs> well, yeah, like you said, they pick and choose. And I, it's so weird that you can do that because it, it, it seems like it makes things more complicated. But I I don't know. It's, it's a decision that they made to just... We'll, We'll acknowledge the things that we like and the things that we didn't like. We'll just brush under the rug and assume that the audience has forgotten. But, uh, you know, when they first announced that this was going to be the last Wolverine movie, I thought, why? Because Hugh Jackman is still uh, uh, fit and I- I interested. He's, you know, he's not sick to death of playing Wolverine and all that. And. And so when I saw the movie and realized that it's set, what, a dozen years in the future, that I was just like, oh, okay, I guess they're doing it this way because he is still fit now as a, like a 50-year-old or 40-something-year-old. But we're going to make him up so he looks older so he can be like the last hurrah. But if we actually had a 60-something-year-old Hugh Jackman playing Wolverine... It wouldn't have the same. He wouldn't be able to do the stuff that he's doing right. in this. And so we're not all Harrison Ford. We can't be an action hero pushing 80. Yeah, but, like uh, Sean Connery. Oh, I think Connery retired before he was Harrison Ford's age. I don't know. Apparently one day we'll get another Indiana Jones movie and it'll be... Or maybe it won't be so bad. I think the, the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was the one where you just like, oh, gosh, he got old. And then three minutes later, you've forgotten that he got old. Uh, although it might be such a long stretch of time that you'll have to get used to it all over again when Indiana Jones 5 finally gets made. But anyhow, the the thing, you know, the, so they painted up Hugh Jackman to look older and they painted up uh, Patrick Stewart to look, you know, super old and all that stuff just because... You never know, you know, with Patrick Stewart, you you don't want to wait until he's 80-something to do the final Xavier movie. But when they killed him at the end, I did expect them to have some kind of sequel set up. Just that that maybe they'd never cash in, you know what I mean? It's like the the rocks move a little bit on the the grave or whatever. Or maybe the, the cross falls over on its own and makes the X. But they didn't, you know, it was like definitively this is the end, guys. The, the and, setup for the sequel is X-23 will be female Wolverine. 
that's probably what you'll get. And that that is the case in the comic books. She is Wolverine right now, yeah. And the next movie will be called X-23. And I'll be like, what? This is only 11. <laughs> um, so what did you think of her? Did you know from the very moment that she appeared that that's who she was going to be? Or, or did they give that away in the trailers? I don't know if they did, but I had heard it somewhere if they didn't give it away in the trailers. I did know that that was what was going on. Uh, I think I probably saw it on one of those spoilery kind of articles you get sometimes on Facebook when you're just scrolling through your feed and, and then you see, oh yes, X-23 is in Logan. Uh but I thought she was good. She was silent for half of the movie. And then she started yelling. And never stopped. And, yeah. <laughs> but is it one of those things that I kind of hate about movies when they have somebody that is not an English speaker. But they still speak some English. They have them do stuff like, Tu estás muriendo. And then she says... You are dying. It's like, why did you say both? Just say one. <laughs> but if... if uh, the, Well, they had Wolverine not speak Spanish. Sure. So that she's forced to speak English, which I thought was fine. But yeah, the, she did do it a couple of times. Just where she she'd says say it, it and then she'd translate. It was like watching Dora the Explorer slightly, you know. It's just <laughs> like, Salta! Salta! Jump! jump. And it's just like, ah, oh, why can't they just not say both? I mean, this isn't an episode where we're supposed to learn how to speak some Spanish so that we can sing the birthday song in Spanish to our Spanish friends. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's just one of those things that bugs me when they do that, where they say it in Spanish, then immediately say it again in English. And yeah, I guess it just makes me think of Dora the Explorer or something where they like you have to say everything. And I remember they, <laughs> they had that awesome, one of my favorite things that uh, Saturday Night Live has done in, I don't know, recent memory was when they did a Dora the Explorer parody <laughs> where Dora was saying, she would say everything. She was saying like a whole lot of crap and she had to like repeat it. She was like, Spanish, English, Spanish, English, Spanish, English. And she kept having to go over and over and over and over again. It was a crack up. But the, the, my favorite thing on that was when she's like, um, do you see Swiper? Or was it called Swiper? The yeah, thing? Swiper it's was like, the Does fuck. anybody see Swiper? And then she says, answer me, damn you. Yeah. Or the one part where she's like, say Salta or something like that. She's like, do it, asshole. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we did have a little bit of Dora the Explorer in there, which <laughs> which bugs me a little. But uh, all in all, yeah, it was good. And I thought the girl did a really good job. She, how old is that girl? Because she looked tiny. Didn't oh, she? I, I don't know. I, that, she, I would guess like 10 Okay. It, or or less, if I had to put the age on the girl. But I assume from what she was doing in this film that she looks younger than she actually is. Because... Well, she's still a kid. Even if, yeah, she's a Hollywood kid and she's 12 and she can pass for 8. I Yeah, I don't know. I, I This was her first movie, so... She was Gary Coleman-esque in this... Uh, <laughs> in the Because I, yeah... And yeah, they tend to find... People with that characteristic, you know, where they look so much younger. Michael J. Fox-esque. She's going to grow to be five feet tall someday. <laughs> well, yeah, if they really wanted to spin her off. Or just have her show up and kill a couple of guys in Deadpool 2. That would be pretty neat. But, yeah, she may well look like that for the next ten years. Next fifty years. I oh, know! She's been gray-haired and still look like a... Six-year-old kid. Yeah, she. The, I, they, there was something about her face. She had like this flat, little, feral face that just. Yeah, it wasn't cute. It was. There was. It was dangerous. Well, it, it was like animal kind of probably thing. Probably because she only glared <laughs> and shouted. Though I mean, you you don't look cute unless you smile at least, which I don't. I don't know that she, she did. ever did once. But this was, as we said in the beginning, <laughs> not a happy movie. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, like we said, I don't think there was one joke 
the closest thing you got to a joke was when like the the oaky assholes got you know their faces punched in or something like that. The best laugh out loud moment is when he hits him in the face with the butt of his own rifle. A little dour, yeah. But you know, I think that's what they were going for. They wanted to make an unpleasant movie. Visually, it was ugly. You know what I mean? It was yeah, just it was like... really stark. The only time they ever had a location that was nice, I guess the. I don't know where, where the hell were they when they were in like the casino? Someplace in Texas, right? Was it Texas? It was, I was still Texas. It was, was it still Texas? I was guessing it was Oklahoma. Oh but... well, there there was a sign for Oklahoma City, and then we, they went to the the casino, and then. After they left the casino, there was another sign for Oklahoma City. So. Yeah, I couldn't understand. I don't know where the heck they were. I was trying to figure it out because, you know, they were in El Paso, was it, to start with? Oh, I don't know. Which I'm not exactly sure where in Texas El Paso is, to tell you the truth. You will. <sighs> I couldn't figure out where they went. I was thinking, oh, maybe they're, like, in Missouri. Do they have, like, riverboat gambling in Missouri? <laughs> they have some gambling in weird places. I've read in John Grisham books that Mississippi does gambling, I think. And they have lots of casinos in Biloxi. Well, dude, I would think every state west of the Mississippi that's not Idaho or Utah has gambling in, like, a... Indian reservation or you well, know, yeah, just like I, some little place. Where... An Indian reservation, but what they were at looked like Las Vegas. That's right, because we didn't see what she was looking at, but we saw like the reflections of the yeah, lights. Yeah, there was like is... signs with flashing lights and big old hotels that were full of people. I don't know where the hell they were, but anyways, the first time you, I mean, that, that was a nice location at least because it was fancy. I don't know that it was pretty. But it was fancy. The, the first time you ever saw a location that seemed even slightly nice was at the very end in the fight as they're running through this kind of green pine forest. Yeah, that was really Now, cool. okay, this is uh, pretty. But before that, it was desert and more desert and usually not even the nice parts of the desert. It was like, okay, this is just the side of the, the road. Right now, there's 100 miles that direction to the next city. And probably 200 miles back where we came from to the last city. And there's some sagebrush here. And it just goes on for as far as you can see. Which is what we got for most of the thing. So yeah, even that was dark. Even but that the... was intentional though. Oh yeah. They wanted to remind you visually how hopeless the world was. How hopeless Wolverine's, or sorry, Logan's uh, scenario. Oh, did you notice that he called himself James Howlett a lot in this movie? Yeah, that was his thing that he was hiding. Is it his name that he was hiding under? What does James Howlett come from? Is that his real name? That's his name? birth name, yeah. Oh, okay. I remember that now. But I think at this point, Wolverine was famous because there were X-Men comic books now in this universe. So everybody knew who he was. Somehow the comic book companies were taking their real exploits and gussying them up and making them all fun and fancy and kid-friendly or whatever. Which was interesting, I thought. It's, a, it's an interesting world to consider something like that. Has there ever been a comic book like that? Where they just took real people and gave them exploits? Well, yeah, sure. I mean, Kiss of... had their own comic <laughs> okay. book. And Barack Obama hung out with <laughs> Peter Parker and, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, and in Marvel Comics, there that was a running thing, that there were comic books that were created to retell like the actual adventures that were going on, you know, the things that the Avengers were doing, and, and you know, okay, and that's cool. Maybe they were based on fact, or maybe they were, you know, Kiss was based on fact. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, are you telling me that stuff didn't really happen? Because I, I read the whole run. Did you? <laughs> uh, kiss. So uh, it's the end of an era, you know? It's It's been 17 years. And when I think about it being 17 years, holy smoke, that's a long time. But it really just feels like two or three years ago that the first X-Men movie came out. And they were doing reshoots on it right before it came out. Because if you recall, it was supposed to come out Christmas of 2000. And then Fox had something fall through and they said, Oh, we need it by summer of 2000. And so they shaved off 
six months from the, the schedule, and Brian Singer really, really had to hustle. And right before it was coming out, he had time to do some tiny little reshoots. And I was working at 20th Century Fox at the time, and I was driving one of those electric carts. And Tyler Main was there as Sabretooth, and a couple of these other dudes, they were you know, in the middle of reshoot filming of X-Men. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to happen. This is going to be so awesome. And that feels like two or three years ago. <laughs> yeah, the interesting thing is that movie was what... Well, I guess I should say X2 was the one that really got me into comic books. Before that, I don't think I'd ever read... Well, no, I'd read a comic book, but I hadn't read comic books since I was like 12. That was what, I guess, rekindled comic books for me. And before that, the comic books that I read were G.I. Joe and a comic book series called Vigilante, but not about the cowboy guy. It was a different guy. It was a D.C. guy named Vigilante who wore a black suit with a couple of stripes on it that spelled a V. And he went around and just shot people. He was just basically a G.I. Joe guy. <laughs> uh, he had no superpowers. Uh, but yeah, it was a good movie. I would recommend seeing it. Don't go out for a laugh uh, to see it because you're not going to get that. But it's it's rough. It's harsh. But it has a lot of heart. And uh, if you like Big Anklevich stories that end poorly, <laughs> you might enjoy this movie too. <laughs> the thing is, a movie like this, I, I don't know how much re rewatch value it has because yeah it's going to bum you out a little bit every single time you see it and I don't know they, it made me want to watch Shane again I know I want to watch Shane I've never seen Shane I've never seen a lot I'm sure there's at least 10 the movies western movies that are super classics that I have never seen and uh I feel like I'm missing something. I feel like I should see them. And, uh, yeah, Shane is one of them. I have seen a few that are classics, but I think there's plenty that I need to see that I haven't. Well, anyway. The I... line from Shane was what she pronounced over his dead body. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. The whole speech that Shane gives before... Well, it's open to interpretation before what happens at the end of the of the movie. But it, uh, yeah, it makes me want to run out and see that. I haven't seen it in a long, long time. But yeah, okay, so this is the chapter is closed, I'm assuming, on these. And maybe they'll keep making X-Men movies. Maybe they won't restart, but I get the impression that it's for Patrick Stewart and, and Hugh Jackman. It's our huge Jackman. How is it? Huge Ackman. For him, it's all done. <laughs> But, it, you know, it was a huge hit. We didn't really talk about that. It made way more money than they thought it would. Uh, Fox was saying, you know, we expect it to make 60, maybe 65 or something like that. And, like, the competitors were saying, you know, I'll bet it does 70. And, then, yeah, it did 86 or something like that just in its first three days, which is uh, really, really good. And even better than the 2009 one opened. And that was just, a, you know, a gargantuan opening for a movie that nobody likes in retrospect. That but, was X-Men Origins Wolverine. Right. 2009. Anyhow, like I said, end of an era, so who knows where, where we go from mm -hmm. here. We'll see what there is for us in the future. I'm sure we'll still be here sitting in this car talking about it. <laughs> Well, who knows? Maybe this is the last time we'll do this, and this is the end of an era, too. They'll bury the deck, gets my goat under a whole bunch of rocks. Yeah, and they'll tur turn the D sideways so that it looks like shell. it's spinning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I've been Rich Outfield. And I've been Big Anglerich. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Good night. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Apparently, the creative in creative comments doesn't mean anything. Andrea Romano was a big fan of Firefly, and when it got canceled, 
she hired like every single one of those cast members to play somebody on Justice League Unlimited. And, nice. Yeah. Did you notice on the Deadpool trailer they had a f- bunch of Firefly posters <laughs> on the window behind weird. them? Weird. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's cool, but why? It's like Firefly is 2002. And it just... Well, that's just how run down that place was. Oh, yikes. 